Welcome back to another episode of Swamp Stories. For this episode, we head to the most notorious part of LA. But before we get into it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. You can also follow the Instagram page as well. So let's get into it. Last week, I ran across a TikTok about the jungles neighborhood in LA, and I scrolled through the comments and it was filled with people making fun of how nice the area looks. One comment said, yo, I'm from Memphis. These LA hoods look like paradise. Another comment said, yo, this looks like an upscale neighborhood. Why are they trying to act hood? And that made me really wonder, is this what the South thinks of California? Yes. The answer is yes. Let's be honest, how are you gonna tell a dude from Memphis or Baton Rouge that this is the trenches? As a matter of fact, I don't think there's a city in the country with nicer hoods than LA. And I know people are going to get mad at this, but trust me, if you ever leave California, you'll see what I'm talking about. Once you leave, you'll see how ridiculous it is to live in a neighborhood like this and consider yourself being in the trenches. So boom, the rest of the country sees LA as the softest and most privileged you can be. But then explain this, how did LA dudes take over all the southern neighborhoods? For example, why are there rolling 40s in Savannah, Georgia and Hoover's in St. Louis, Missouri? Every city in the south was taken over by LA over the past 30 to 40 years. And I say all that to say this, do not let the looks fool you, this is the real deal. So in this video, we're gonna cover the most infamous hood in LA. But before we get into it, let me run the intro. In order to do the video justice, let's head all the way back to the start. Baldwin Hills was constructed in the early 1930s. Before the 1930s, the whole Baldwin area was completely empty land. But ahead of the 1932 Olympics, the government decided to develop the area to house all the athletes. Well, after the Olympics, the city wanted to get rid of everything they built. But after locals fought for the government to sell the homes, they finally caved in. Now listen to this, the houses sold for $215. No, not $215,000, $215 straight up. So the beautiful thriving neighborhood was growing fast into one of the nicest in the city. So to continue the growth of the neighborhood, they decided to build 627 units of private housing. Yes, you heard that correctly. These are not the projects. All of this is and always was privately owned. And the theme was to build the most luxurious, family-friendly complex in the country. They put palm trees, banana trees, and all kinds of tropical plants to set the theme. Well, by 1943, the housing project was complete and they officially named it the Jungles. Now, I want people to realize that at this time, Los Angeles was just 2.2% African American. But even as many more began moving to LA, this entire area was off limits. It was actually illegal to live in Baldwin Hills, the Jungle, and even Crenshaw. That's because the government classified these areas as top tier and elite. That was until 1950 when the Supreme Court struck down the law completely. And this opened the floodgates for residents of all backgrounds to live anywhere they want. And everyone wanted to live in the Baldwin Hills area. So residents from the South began moving in one at a time. And once the neighborhood's demographics started shifting, the original Baldwin Hills residents left in large numbers. They sold their houses, ended their leases, and found new areas to live. So by the mid-1960s, the area was over 80% African American. Movie stars such as the Jefferson musicians such as Cy Kravitz and plenty of LA Lakers moved into the neighborhood. That was and still is the story of Baldwin Hills, peace, wealth, and happiness. However, the foot of the hills has a completely different story. Throughout the 1960s, the jungles gradually got worse and worse. However, at first, anyone from the jungles was seen as silver spoons. South Central and Watts residents saw the jungles as paradise and they were treated as such. But all that would change in 1969. And that takes us to the south side of Chicago. Specifically Blackstone Avenue because that's where a group called the Blackstone Rangers originated. They started in 1961 as just a troubled group of teenagers. But by 1963, they became the most feared in the whole city. And for whatever reason, they renamed themselves the Black Pea Stones with the P representing peace. Well, one of the neighborhood kids began getting involved with them at just 11 years old. And once his mother found out, she instantly moved out to LA to escape the path her son was taking. 
So by then, the 14-year-old Chicago native was living in the jungles, and quickly his mother learned that this was not the escape she had planned. Her son began going by T. Rogers, and his mission was to spread the Black Peace Stones to his new neighborhood. He was fierce, tough, and charismatic, so over the next year or so, the jungles became Black Peace Stones territory. And after taking over the jungles, they took over the Village Green Apartments and then a neighborhood up the street as well. So by 1972, the Black Peace Stones consisted of over 700 members. And on top of this, they claimed the largest territory out of any group in LA. The former Silver Spoon neighborhood was no longer such a peaceful place. So let me break it down. The Black Peace Stones, also known as BPS, joined together with the Bloods and adopted the Red Rags as well. And this made them instant rivals with the Rolling Thirties, who live right across Crenshaw Boulevard. And because of that, it also made them rivals with the Rolling Forties who live directly below them. But most importantly, the Black Pea Stones are cold rivals with 18th Street, maybe the most dangerous in the whole state of California. These guys are spread throughout the city and have thousands of members. So instantly, the Black Pea Stones had their hands full and the jungles became the most dangerous place in the country. They were surrounded by rivals at every angle and this made life miserable for everyone. Trust me, this isn't your typical video. This is the real deal. The jungles may look nice, but there's nothing sweet about them. Now, obviously, I can't possibly cover everything that's happened. So in this video, I'm gonna cover some important events. One thing that makes LA different than the rest of the country is how random the incidents are. For example, someone from one side may have never met a rival in their life, but if he runs into someone he suspects is a rival, it's on sight no matter what. So you'd think that members would try to stay low or stay behind tin. But nope, the culture is to represent your side to the fullest, and if that means paying the consequences, then that's that. And that takes us to 2006, maybe LA's worst year. A man named Chris Avila decided to move into the jungles earlier in the year, specifically an apartment on Pinafore Street, right in the middle of BPS most active block. Well, Chris happens to be associated with 18th Street, however, he himself is not a member. That's the reason he felt comfortable moving into the jungles. But here's the problem, BPS simply does not care. September 24th, 2006, Chris Avila picks up his daughters from school and heads back home. He parks in front of his apartment, gets out of the car, and opens the door for his three-year-old daughter. Well, right up the street happens to be a BPS member named Laron Lattimore, also known as Boogie. Boogie notices Chris, and for whatever reason, he assumes that he's a rival. So Boogie turns to his friend Jonathan Banks, also known as Gambino. He says, you see that? There we go right there. Instantly, Gambino gets nervous and tells Boogie to take him home. But Boogie ignores him, so Banks jumps out of the car and runs behind a tree. So Boogie keeps keeps driving and pulls up to Chris. He yells F-18, so Chris turns around and yells F-B-P-S, and that's all it took. After the incident, Boogie drives away and Gambino runs inside his apartment. But later that night, Gambino gets a knock on the door. A BPS member tells him that Boogie is looking for him. He tells him that Boogie is afraid that he might snitch, so he recommends that he gets out of town. So Gambino goes to San Bernardino to live with his aunt and shaves his head. And this made LAPD very suspicious. Why would an innocent person shave their head? Well, Gambino was arrested first. That's because a nearby witness testified that he saw Gambino involvement. The man claims that Gambino was driving a brown van and then he did it. Well, Gambino was not having it, so he told everything. He told them about Boogie and everything he saw Boogie do. And because of that, Boogie got 80 years. But guess what? Gambino got life as well. So pretty much Gambino ratted out his friend and got nothing in return. This is the sad reality of living in the jungles. It can happen at any time and for any reason. And on top of this, you never know who you can and can't trust. And incidents like this are not a one-time thing. In fact, between 2001 and 2006, there were 28 homicides in Baldwin Village. That puts the jungles up there with any neighborhood in the country, if not worse. So just because LA as a whole has low crime compared to other regions, the hood is still the hood. And incidents like this are what have made the jungles LA's biggest enemy. Let's fast forward to the new era where everything has gotten extremely messy, so let me break it down. 
The jungles are the most polarizing section in LA. They wear St. Louis Cardinals gear to represent the stones. So if you're in yeah, LA, yeah. please do not wear any St. Louis Cardinals gear. That is not a good idea. Now, personally, I wouldn't let another man dictate what I can and can't wear, so I'd walk around wearing anything I want. So let's just be clear, this advice is just for you guys. Well, the jungles pretty much align with the Inglewood families, the Hoovers, and the Rolling Twenties. That's it. But their list of rivals is much longer. The jungles are rivals with the entire neighborhood card. That means the Rolling Thirties, Forties, Fifties, Nineties, and East Coast. Then on top of this, they're rivals with 18th Street, Venice Shoreline, the Schoolyard, and West Boulevard Crips. Although they have all these rivals, their true main rival is the 40s, plain and simple. That's why you can identify a BPS by having 4K in their username. And on the other hand, the Rolling 40s can be identified by having 5K in theirs. The 5 comes from the original Black Peace Stone saying, Love, Truth, Peace, Freedom, and Justice. I guess those are the 5 things they stand for. Well, that doesn't apply to all of them. And that takes me to a BPS who goes by Infant Nightmare. And this guy may be the worst person to ever come out of the jungles. His life is dedicated to hating the rolling 40s. So much so that his Instagram name is literally 40k. Disclaimer, this next story is alleged and it was taken off another YouTuber's claims. November 14th, 2017. Let me introduce you to a 27 year old rolling 40 named Antonio Wilson, also known as Tiny Hardhead. Although he's a rolling 40, he mostly hangs out with the rolling 50s. Specifically, the legendary Crib Mac. That's Lupe from 40s on 5x Crib! 3 p.m. Antonio was at a taco truck in the Vermont Square Park, and that's when a white BMW 3 Series pulls up. Bang! After this happened, the internet instantly accused Infant Nightmare of doing it. However, that is unconfirmed. Either way, this incident devastated the 40s and especially Crip Mac. Just a year later, on October 4th, 2018, Infant Nightmare was found at the Jim Gilliam Park right in the jungles. This next incident is another example of how random and spontaneous the jungles can be. So let me set the context. In 2017 and 2018, LA had an up and coming videographer named Renardo Page, also known as Scooby. And he recorded videos for everyone on both sides. That includes Infant from the jungles and Johnny Rose from the 40s. It didn't matter whatsoever, Scooby did not care about any of the BS. And his life would change in 2018 when he recorded Blueface's Thotsianovic. Video. The video released on Worldstar on July 5th, 2018 and now has 21 million views. After this, the industry started accepting Scooby and he got cosigns from Quavo and even Drake. Well, on December 5th, 2018, things turned dark. Scooby is set to record a video in the jungles for one of their rappers. So he pulls up, parks, and gets all of the equipment from his trunk. That's when three men walk up to him and grab his equipment. He tries to get it back and bang. This was yet another incident that made the jungles the most hated in LA. But on a positive note, the jungles have an up and coming rap group that I think can make it big if they play their cards right. Let me introduce you to the Baby Stone Gorillas. The group is made up of four rappers. First you have Top 5, also known as the Michael Jackson of the group. He's the handsome one, very handsome, wait pause, no no no. Then you have E Killa, Popcorn, and Five Much. I'm not gonna lie, these dudes have to change their names. But anyways, in typical BPS fashion, they have issues with everyone, like for real. They don't plan on shaking hands with any LA rappers. And that's probably why their songs feature mostly NorCal rappers anyway. Anyways, the Baby Stone Gorillas have one rap group that they hate, the Stink Team. Now, to be fair, the Stink Team seem to have problems with everyone as well, including Adam22. How that happened, who knows? But here's how the issues with the Stink Team started. After Draco's passing, Top 5 went on Instagram Live dissing Draco the Ruler. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. We don't get thrust the bimbos at us though. We ain't been worried about, we ain't been worried about Stink Team. He been subbing us. Y'all favorite rapper wanna stuff the baby song Grizz though. The Stink Team would respond. It's your way to niggas come about the Stinks don't run LA. Yeah, alright. Uh Let's make it make sense. If we don't run LA, why y'all so pressured up here? Why is niggas so mad to the point where they acting like fans? Hopefully this whole situation stays on the internet where it belongs. I wouldn't recommend that anyone gets into it with the jungles. And from what I hear, the stink team isn't really like that. But what do you guys think? Which group runs LA, the Baby Stone Gorillas or the stink team? And 
And that's going to do it for this episode of Swamp Stories. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Peace!